Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Madison Jonathan from MLC Tech and today we're doing a video on AMD's upcoming line of iDNA4 graphics cards. Now this generation, AMD is planning only to release a mid-range and entry-level line of graphics cards when it comes to its upcoming iDNA4 series, which is expected to launch sometime in 2024, but we have a new report today detailing some more concrete details as regards of the actual graphical processing units on these cards. So sit back and relax as we dive into the details of AMD's upcoming Navi 48 and Navi 44 GPUs. Now AMD is preparing to unveil two next generation GPUs in the fourth quarter of 2024, that being Navi 48 and Navi 44. Though it is important to note that none of these graphics cards will match the current performance of NVIDIA and AMD's current flagship out on the market. Though they could compare favorably to some of the currently available high-end GPUs on the market to try and push prices down even lower. So while this information isn't confirmed by AMD and is subject to change upon actual release, a new report from Moore's Laws is Dead alleges that the graphics cards based on Nami 48 will reach performance somewhere between the RX 7900 XT and AMD's current flagship being the 7900 XTX, with a much smaller die size. The Radeon 7900 XT has a die size of 529mm squared, whereas Navi 48's die is projected to be somewhere between 300 and 350mm squared, which is a lot closer to the die size of the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which has a die size of 379mm squared. And it's also expected that the initial shipments of Navi 48 GPUs might feature 256-bit memory enabling 20 gigabits per second GDDR6 VRAM, which shows we're not going to get a major leap when it comes to overall graphics card technology when it comes to iDNA4, as GDDR7 is right around the corner and AMD is still opting to use GDDR6 due to the fact they are targeting the mid and entry level range of GPUs, so they're opting to still use GDDR6 RAM in order to save costs, as I expect when GDDR7 first hits the market, it's going to be very expensive and only exclusive to super high high-end graphics cards, but it's expected that Navi 48 could potentially rival the performance of the RTX 4080, and while the high-end 4080 from NVIDIA hovers for around $1,000 at the moment, the upcoming RDNA 4 card is not expected to exceed $600, which I think could be fantastic to see if we can get 48 levels of performance for only $600. But now let's jump over to the more entry-level focus card, that being Navi 44. Now the performance of this card is expected to be similar to that of the RX 7700 and easily surpass that of the RTX 4060 Ti. And the die size of this GPU is expected to not exceed 210mm squared, though it is too early to currently speculate on Navi 44's pricing, as we are a lot more scarce of details on the ship compared to Navi 48. But for some additional context for the current pricing of GPUs, the RX 7600 XT, which also uses a 204mm squared die, is priced currently at around $329. Though I imagine the pricing structure of this GPU will follow that of the Navi 48 variant of significantly lowering the entry point of performance for the price you are paying. The fact that AMD is pushing the level of performance at a much lower cost is what the industry needs to sort of return to somewhat more normal GPU pricings. Now I know we will never get to the era of the 10 series where we could get a 1080 Ti for less than £600 purely from an economic point of view. So much has changed in the market from resource costs to inflation in general of, of economies. So we're never going to see that return to pricing. But if we can have pushed to more reasonable levels of cost to performance then I think Navi 44 and Navi 48 could be that push that the industry needs as a whole. Now, engineering samples of RDNA 4 graphics cards have already been reported to boost clock speeds between 3.0 and 3.3 gigahertz. Additionally, the lineup will feature monolithic dies based on TSMC's 5 nanometer N4P process. And it is also presumed that RDNA 4 will be direct competition with Intel's upcoming Battle Mage lineup of Arc GPUs. And Intel are scheduling their lineup of Battle Mage GPUs for a release in the second half of 2024. And previous reports have indicated that Battle Mage will also utilize TSMC's 5nm M4 process. 
But unlike our DNA 4 and Intel's current line of GPUs, Battle Mage is expected to include an enthusiast class level GPU. So that could be something that could compete with a 4080 Super or even a 4090. Based on reports, Intel's upcoming flagship GPU is going to be more direct competition with the likes of the 4080 Super opposed to the super high-end RTX 4090. However, that isn't going to be the only competition that we have to face this year in the graphics card space. With the main graphics card competitor in the space, that being NVIDIA, might be expected to bring out an RTX 5000 series based on TSMC's 3 nanometer node. And it is anticipated that this process node will bring significant performance improvements over the RTX 40000 series and could be launched in either Q4 2024 or early 2025. So overall, I think the direction that AMD is taking RDNA 4 GPUs is a good direction for the GPU market, as we need a lot more stronger competition on graphics cards that people can actually buy and put in their systems, that being the entry level and mid range of GPUs. And if the release of these cards can push the pricing envelope for each tier of GPUs down by a significant margin, and I'm fully on board for AMD taking this approach when it comes to this generation of graphics cards. Now, while I am sort of disappointed that we're not getting a super high-end flagship from AMD this generation, due to the fact that I would love to put an AMD card in my system, and I would love to make the switch from Team Green over to Team AMD, but I think for the wider community out there and system builders as a whole, I can definitely see this being a card that I could potentially recommend to a lot of people if the price and performance is right after all. But I think focusing on these markets is the direction that AMD needs to take in order to captivate more market share. And if they are really able to bring 4080 levels of performance for $600, then it's going to be tough to pretty much recommend any other card in the mid range. So it's going to be very interesting to how this will affect the wider market as a whole and how this will also affect the pricing over at Intel and also Team Green at NVIDIA. But I think it's great to see more focus put in the entry level and mid range of GPUs as quite frankly, GPU manufacturers have just relegated the mainstream PC tech community for absolute fools with, with them tailoring their graphics cards to the super high end, the 4080 supers, the 4090s. So I think it's great to see this more return to form tailing to the main base of the PC market. As quite frankly, you don't need to milk the normal consumer dry in the GPU space. AMD and both NVIDIA are making so much money when it comes to the enterprise market, when it comes to their server processors, GPUs, the AI compute units that they're making based on their GPU technology. Quite frankly, they're making so much money in the super high end bait on from enterprise customers that they don't need to milk the consumer and force customers who just want to play some games on their PCs to spend over a thousand dollars on a GPU. So seeing this return to form of somewhat more normal pricing and focus on more normal priced GPUs is great to see. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this topic in the comments down below. What do you think of the news of AMD's upcoming line of RDA 4 GPUs and are you potentially looking forward to picking one up later this year? And how do you feel about the current pricing structure of the GPU market? And are you so tired of so much focus and emphasis being put on the super high end market of GPUs that it's actually turned you off PC building and your interest in the PC community a little bit? Let me know all your thoughts and opinions around this in the comments down below. Anyway, I have been Madison Charlton from MLC Tech. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it in any way, shape or form, make sure to give this video a like and maybe subscribe for more content like this in the future. Thank you so much again for watching and I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye for now.